Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. Isn't it lovely? Beautiful day. Well, before we begin our praise songs, I want to welcome Marilyn back with us. Always good to have her back with us. Thank you, Marilyn, for playing today for us. And I do just want to let you know that the flowers on the altar um, on each side of the cross are from Bob Calhoun's service, so if you'll please continue to keep his family in your prayers. Uh, the flowers in front of the altar on the floor are from Bev and Chuck's 50th wedding anniversary that they celebrated here yesterday. And the, the pink roses there in the vase in the middle of the altar are in honor of Harper's baptism today. So we thank families for providing those flowers today. If you'd like to stand now as you're able, we're going to join in singing our praise hymn, Thy Word and Celebrate Love. Please stand as you're able. Good morning, everyone. I don't know if this was planned or not, but it's pretty great for a baptism Sunday to sing this.
Thank you for joining us. Please be seated. Good morning. Would you sell, uh, call the worship and uh, join me with that, please? Today is a brand new day, and with it comes God's unfailing love and mercy. Divine life restores life. God's love gives us new life through His Son, Jesus. Would you remain seated and join us in hymn number 98, To God Be the Glory. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the family you have given us in Jesus Christ. We pray that you will bless us as we gather today to worship you and to seek your wisdom and to care for one another. Help us to hear your word and to do your will. Grant that joy and peace may fill every heart and that in this place we might become more deeply in love with you and with one another. We ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our brother, and our friend. Amen. Let us now share our joys and our concerns. Yesterday, um, someone in our family had a birthday. Um, what did, and he is now three years old. Congratulations to Cor. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. 
I think, too, while we're just on the subject of birthdays, doesn't Keaton have one on Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on Saturday. And, you know, we have other birthdays this week, and we might have more that I'm not even aware of, and please let me know if we do. I know Lee, where's Lee at? Lee's birthday's tomorrow. And um, Nicole, is Nicole's here? Her birthday's on the 24th, right? Nicole's. And Louise's is on the 25th. We have several birthdays. Anybody else have a birthday this week? Well, let's um, celebrate all of those birthdays. Happy birthday to all of you folks. While you're thinking, I do want to welcome Harper's Baptism, of course, is today, and David and Jody are, are joining the church, so we have their family up here, so would you please join with me in welcoming them this morning. I guess it could be called a joy, but we're, we'll be coming up on Advent season, and um, I got a call from Kathy Knoyer about the points that is um, this week, and it'll be in the newsletter for that, and we'll have word forms in uh, next Sunday and the following two Sundays uh, bulletins, and so if you'd like to fill those out, she said the prices haven't changed. I think it was six seventy-five for the 6-inch and $15 for the 8-inch same colors, so uh, be thinking about it to um, get one of those and then we take care of them and they've been surviving pretty good and a lot of people take them home and enjoy them for quite a while after after uh, Christmas. Thank you, Sharon. I might mention too, next Sunday is the Sunday we're going to celebrate Laity Sunday. Merlin will be sharing the message and we'll have a lot of different laity doing different parts of the service, so we hope you can join us for that special time to celebrate all of you in the, the ministry of this church done through all of you. Well, if nobody else is going to say it, I'm going to say we've had a lot of, uh, a lot of deaths in our community, um, including, I know, uh, the last one I think was Beverly Webb, and, and a, I'm going to say a young guy because he was under 50, Tom Lovell from Griswold. Um, I think it's just a hard time of year, and I think uh, we all need to think about those people around us who are going through hard times, and it can be a really depressing time because of the weather and stuff like that. And I'd also ask for prayers for my friend Quana and her little girl, Liani, who are going through a lot of difficult things right now, and uh, just keep everybody in our prayers. Thank you, Misha. Other joys or concerns this morning? I've got one. It's so nice to see some old but new faces back in church. It's so nice to have Nancy back. It certainly is. Thank you, Merlin. Thank you. Pastor? Yes. Uh, we got Rita home last, last week, but we have a long way to go, too. Okay. Well, we're glad she's home. Okay. Well, certainly keep Rita in our prayers. Thank you for sharing with us, Daryl. Thank you, Merlin. Let us have a time of silent prayer. <laughs> Loving and gracious God, we praise your name above all others. We give you thanks for the gifts of life and love. You spread before us the path you want us to follow. Help us to discern the way you want us to go, and especially, God, the people you want us to share your good gifts of love and peace with. And also the gifts that you've given to us to share with others, God, help us to be willing to share. Forgive us our failings. Give us hope to try again, knowing that every day you start us anew and give us your strength and courage and all that we need to be your disciples in the world. We pray for all people everywhere who do not know you in a personal way. We pray they will come to know you in a deep and abiding way. 
We also ask, God, today that you increase our faith. This morning we pray for, for all those folks, God, that are experiencing difficulties in different ways, God. Um, there are um, a lot of people, God, that um, have troubles in their life right now, God. Some of them we are aware of and some of them we don't even, don't even know, God, but you know what they are. So we lift these people up to you for, for help, God, for strength and courage and peace and the assurance that you'll help them get through whatever their difficulty is. Especially, God, we lift up Misha's friend and her daughter, what they're going to now be with them. And we remember these families of loved ones who have um, gone on before them, God. It's such a hard time in their lives, God. So we continue to pray for the family of Tom, the family of Bev, Bev the family of Bob, and the family of Larry. And, and others, God, that we have not named out loud today, families that are dealing with loss in their lives. We lift all of them up to you today for healing. We continue to pray for healing for Don and Nancy and Rita and Sandy and Jackie and Dwayne. We remember our farmers for safety and pray, God, that the harvest was much better than we had hoped for, so we praise you for that. We remember our military and pray for their safety and return home. All those folks that are not able to join us on Sunday morning because they are homebound or in the nursing home, God, we lift them up to you today as well. We continue to pray for peace in our own lives, in our community, and in our world, God, knowing that that is possible through your power, God, and each of us have a part to play um, to be peacemakers. We lift all these things up to you and pray in your gracious name, God. Amen. Please join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. children to come forward for the children's message and um, Misha is going to share the message with them this morning. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Let's see here. But how are you going to get food for the baby? Well, we've got to worry about dressing this baby first. The baby's got to be a lot of fat on your body. Yeah. So we're going to take a diaper here. Now, I don't have any campers. Diaper? Because I live in a country without a lot of money. Okay? So we're going to. Thank you. 
Thank you, God, happy for helping us. We're honoring God. Do you see? Do you think we're doing what God wants us to do? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm really passionate about um, the layers. Um, and when somebody's poor in a poor country, I think everybody should have at least one new set of clothes. And for me to just narrow down one thing to talk about today is really hard because I feel really strongly that babies are a gift from God and that it is our job to help the poor. So um, we're going to be taking off the later and I hope that everybody would just think about, just think about the things that I said. That's all sacred.
I want to thank Misha for sharing our children's message, a wonderful message, and um, we'll be able to respond to that with our offering today. And I do want to thank the Sunny School children. They did a wonderful job, and Pam's been their um, teacher, right, teaching them music. So thank you for doing that. Will you join with me in just thanking all of them again for their sharing with us today? Thank you. The scripture lesson this morning is from Psalms 104, verses 1 through 9, verse 24, and 35c. If you'd like to follow along, it's in the Pew Bibles, page 171. Praise the Lord, my soul. O Lord, my God, how great you are. You are clothed with majesty and glory. You cover yourself with light. You have spread out the heavens like a tent and built your home on the waters above. You use the clouds as your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. You use the winds as your messengers and flashes of lightning as your servants. You have set the earth firmly on its foundations and it will never be moved. You placed the ocean over it like a robe and the water covered the mountains. When you rebuked the waters, they fled. They rushed away when they heard your shout of command. They flowed over the mountains and into the valleys to the place you had made for them. You set a boundary they can never pass to keep them from covering the earth again. Verse 24, Lord, you have made so many things. How wisely you made them all. The earth is filled with your creatures. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is now time in the service for our service of baptism for Harper and bringing Davy and Jody into the life of the congregation. So I would invite the family to come forward and also um, their sponsors. <coughs> Todd and Lindsay are our sponsors today, so we welcome them. Congregation, we're on page 33 if you're using your hymnals, and if not, you can look at the screen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift given to us without price. I present Harper, Ava, Gooch for baptism. I also present David and Jody Goot, who come to this congregation from the Salem United Methodist Church. Thank you. On page 34, I have questions for the parents and the sponsors. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? 
and you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. And for the parents and sponsors as well. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? And to Dave and Jody. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of the Christ Holy Church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? And now we are at the top of page 35. 35. These are questions for the congregation, for all of us together to respond. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with the community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. And all of us together, let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We're at the top of page 36, if you're using your hymnals. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and this child who receives it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Harper Ava Goot, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We all respond. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water in the Spirit, you may grow to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Through baptism, we, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit. If you will please join me, we are on the middle of page 37, if you're using the hymnal. Please join me. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. 
We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. And now if you would turn to the following page, page 38. David and Jody have transferred their membership from the Salem United Methodist Church to this church, to the Oakland United Methodist Church. So we want to welcome them and all of their family, Harper and Reese and Isabella this morning. I do have a question for David and Jody. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And the congregation responds. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you, Christian love, as members of whether with you, body of Christ, and in the congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And now may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Let us pray. Dear loving God, we thank you for welcoming us into your family. Be with us, guide us, as together we seek to be your disciples in the world. Amen. Yeah. I guess I better give her back, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I want to. Okay. And I've got her certificate. Sweetheart. Excuse me. Will you join with me in welcoming this family into the life of our congregation? <laughs> what a joy to celebrate, right? Thank you, Merlin. And in response and in honor of Harper's baptism, we're going to sing the beautiful hymn, I was there to hear your morning cry.
Please stand as you're able, and I will share the gospel lesson with you this morning. The gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus. Teacher, they said, there is something we want you to do for us. Well, what is it? Jesus asked them. They answered, when you sit on your throne in your glorious kingdom, we want you to let us sit with you, one on your right and one at your left. Jesus said to them, you don't know what you are asking for. Can you drink the cup of suffering that I must drink? Can you be baptized in the way I must be baptized? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink the cup I must drink and be baptized in the way I must be baptized. But I do not have the right to choose who will sit at my right and at my left. It is God who will give these places to those for whom he has prepared them. When the other ten disciples heard about it, they became angry with James and John. So Jesus called them all together, together to him and said, You know that those who are considered rulers of the heathen have power over them, and the leaders have complete authority. This, however, is not the way it is among you. If one of you wants to be great, you must be the servant of the rest. And if one of you wants to be first, you must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served. He came to serve and to give his life to redeem many people. This is God's good news. And while we are standing, we're going to join in singing the hymn, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Thank you. heard the saying, a picture paints a thousand words, right? That's kind of a familiar saying. Originally, I learned this saying was a Chinese proverb, of course, meaning an idea or a story, a, a concept, maybe a thought, can be best understood when presented visually. This proverb has been used in different ways through the years. In the early 20th century, it was used in an advertising campaign for Doan's backache pills. The ad showed a picture of a senior man kind of bent over, holding his back. And the text below the picture was a version of this Chinese proverb. The text read, every picture tells a story. And if you grew up in the 60s and 70s like I did, this proverb might remind you of the song recorded by the band Bread. Remember, it was titled If, and the first lines were, if a picture paints a thousand words, then why can't I paint you? Remember that pretty song? The words would never show the you I've come to know. I can't remember when I first realized that the word grace had more than one meaning. I always thought grace was what you said before a meal. That was my understanding of it. So when I heard the word grace being used in the church setting in a different way, to be honest, I was somewhat confused. 
And I don't know why, I just didn't ask the pastor or someone else in the church what they really meant when they used the word grace. I think, to be honest, I was a little embarrassed to ask because I thought I probably should know. And to be honest, I didn't see anyone else raising their hand saying, what does that word mean? So I didn't ask. And you know, I could have looked the word grace up in a dictionary, but sometimes it's even difficult to understand dictionary definitions. For example, I guess to kind of prove my point, I brought a book along with me today that I had to buy when I was at school in St. Paul School of Theology Seminary. Um, It's called A Handbook of Theological Terms. It's one of those books you're required to buy, but you use it maybe once or twice, you know what I mean? The only good thing, it was paperback, so it didn't cost too much. But I just want to read you uh, a little bit of what it says about grace. And I'm not going to read you all of it because it is one, two, three, four, five pages long, the definition of grace. I'm going to read you just a paragraph. Grace is perhaps the most crucial concept in Christian theology because it refers to the free and unmerited act through which God restores his estranged creatures to himself. Although all Christian churches accept this formal definition, they disagree us to how this unmerited act is to be conceived, what estrangement means, and how it is to be overcome. But this is to say that the concept of grace itself is intimately related to all the other crucial concepts in a theological perspective, just as they in turn are determined by the idea of grace. One can better understand the concept by attending to some of the major disagreements between the two branches of Western Christendom, Roman Catholic and Protestant. The Roman Catholic concept of grace is finally based on the conviction that salvation is nothing less than the divinization of the soul, the enjoyment throughout eternity of the beatitude God employs himself. An infusion of supernatural powers and virtues is required, the exercise of which will merit for man the splendor of the final beatific vision. (laughs) <laughs> Was that helpful? <laughs> to be honest, that word beatific, I didn't even know what it meant. I had to look it up. Now, personally, I think that if you have to look up a word and a definition of word to figure it out, um, it's not very helpful. Well, back to our Chinese proverb. A picture paints a thousand words. I did some quick counting of the definition of grace in this book, and it's approximately 1,600 words long. So for today, I'm coining a new proverb. A picture paints 1,600 words, 1,600 words, not 1,000. The picture I'm referring to that paints a definition of the word grace is the baptism of Harper, which all of us participated in this morning. The sacrament of baptism is a beautiful picture of God's grace. The very heart of the gospel is that God chooses us. John 15, 16 reads, You did not choose me, but I chose you. Jesus doesn't wait for us to do something. He chooses to give us his love and forgiveness even when we were his enemies. Romans 5.10 says, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Infant baptism especially is a visible reminder to us that we don't have to work for God's love. As beautiful and precious as Harper is, We would agree that as an infant, she has not done anything to earn God's love. Infant baptism is a beautiful picture of God doing it all. Infants can't do something good. They can't decide. They can't choose. They are completely helpless. God comes to them in their helplessness and claims them as his own. God gives them his love, his forgiveness, and his Holy Spirit to guide them as they grow in the knowledge and love of their Savior. Remember the following story in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus was surrounded by women carrying babies. And the the disciples didn't think Jesus should be bothered by these crying, restless, helpless babies. So Jesus' followers were trying to make them kind of move on down the road. Except when Jesus saw them, he called out, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. The Greek word that is translated little children is actually the word for infant. Harper's baptism is a reminder to all of us, regardless of our age, that God is offering his grace, his unconditional love and forgiveness to all of us. And like Harper, we don't have to do anything to earn it. We only have to accept it. Now that is grace. Thanks be to God. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. I would ask our ushers to come forward, and first they will be taking the offering in our baskets for the layettes, and then secondly we will do our regular Sunday offering.
Let us pray. Receive these gifts we bring, O Lord. We pray these gifts will make a difference in the lives of our brothers and sisters around the world. We wrap them in our praise to you. Enlarge our hearts to reach out with love and hope to those around us. Through the power of your spirit, empower us to do your will. Amen. Our closing hymn, let us join in singing, Jesus Calls Us, 398 in the hymnal. for joining us for worship today and we hope that you can stay for a time of refreshment and, and to welcome the Goop family into the life of our congregation. Go in peace. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power and comfort of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you for always. Amen. Amen.